Dr. Nick Santo, you are uh, based in the United States and you're president of uh, one Cameroon Congress. We're looking at the impact of those arrested uh, back then in the United States. Do you think it's going to have an impact on the crisis in Cameroon? Five years and counting and it's still ongoing. Do you think uh, U.S. coming in, stepping in, arrest uh, some uh, of those uh, involved in sponsoring the crisis could have an impact? What do you think is going to happen? Thank you very much for asking me that question. Um, uh, the first point I would like to say is that um, uh, you must be surprised, or most viewers are surprised, to see my name begins today with honorable, which is something that I don't play with. I was an honoree. I was an honoree by the United States President, Joe Biden. I received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the White House. And now I, my name begins a little bit with Honorable Dr. Santo, which means that I have been trusted for speaking the truth. I've been trusted, empowered for, for being a for being a psychologist in the United States, one who observes things and one who does recommendations based on prognosis or based on diagnostic assessment of a situation. Um, you know, I have brothers in the Ambazonia struggle, and I also have brothers in the government. And so when I speak, I have to be objective, to be candid. When uh, the government officials who are war entrepreneurs carry this kind of information, spread it all over to appear as a victory, a victory and an end to the crisis, it's dramatization of the situation. It is over uh, creating a lot of anxiety and a lot of uh, like uh, being too happy about the situation, thinking that it happens like in Cameroon. It is the opposite. When you are in that, when charges are brought upon someone in the United States, there is free, fair judgment. You have a right to appear in court and prove if these things that are brought against you are true or they are wrong. Okay, talking about the participants here of this of this crisis, those who are participating directly or indirectly, of which some of us, myself, so Foncha, were at the forefront of this when it all began. But we back, we 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 we, we, we changed our position when we discovered that the persons hijacked the struggle, hijacked the genuine cry for freedom and marginalization protest to become something of extortion, kidnapping, cutting of hands, arms, cutting of limbs, and all those, uh, using it like to raise money. Raising of money was on two fronts. There are government ministers who are also making money from the government and making the situation worse. We call them war entrepreneurs. War entrepreneurs came in, armed robbers came in. So now, let's look at it. If there are evidence that you are involved directly or indirectly in a war crime, you will not be spared. Those in the U.S., what the FBI is looking at this level is the FBI. Take note, is the FBI and the U.S. courts, not Interpol or whatsoever Salai firm is saying. These people had normally to be to be investigated within the United States because first they have monies in their bank accounts that are accountable. Monies are in their bank accounts, and in the U.S., in the United States, if you have $10,000 in your bank account, you receive a signal on your telephone, and you have to justify when you are filing your tax, where did this money come from? So these people, the first thing the FBI is looking at is the amount of monies that were in their bank accounts. How did they get them? Where did the money come from? What organization did they run to raise this kind of money? So this is an entire U.S. affair, and they will be tried by the U.S. courts on those basis. If they are found guilty that they were taking money on the ground, uh, they had connection on the ground of kidnapping people, and money is coming into the United States unaccountable, that is Exhibit A. Then secondly, They'll be looking at their phone calls. What kind of messages do you do go through when you converse with people? What kind of information do you pass around? Do you give orders or instructions for people to be killed on the ground? Do you? Because let me tell you, this is not a banana republic. The United States is not a banana republic. It is not where judges have been influenced to pass death sentences on people without evidence. You are called in the court. You have to bring your evidence. You have to have to go through your communications. They have to go through your bank accounts. They have to go through everything about you. Where do you work? Uh, how regular are you at your job site? I mean, what people say about you, they cross-examine. And if they find out that you are not guilty, you will be released. Last year, we had others who were indicted. Mangan was amongst and others. Today, 
We have not seen whether the case has been concluded because this case can take two, three years for it to go and appear in court, be adjourned, and you have to look for more evidence, more investigation. So it shouldn't be a jubilation back in Cameroon because the fact is this issue has to be resolved peacefully, negotiably, amicably amongst the stakeholders of the individuals at the forefront and those ministers who are war entrepreneurs also have to back out because they are the ones making things worse. They are the ones paying all those lobby firms, firms here. At least they have entered into business deals with these lobby firms whereby they collect money from here when they rush over here and negotiate with these people, keep some money in their own bank accounts, buy houses abroad. And I mean, this has been a, a something that if I want to talk about, I am criticizing the both sides that are guilty of war crimes. Them. I wish that after these three persons, other persons also will be indicted, and the, those in the Cameroon government, ministers also, who are at the forefront of this, have to be indicted as well. Afrique Media. Le monde, c'est nous.